I don't want the mold um, from which these arms were cast. And you can see how it hypothetically just fits, you know, into there. Um, and uh, this mold was made from the gray foam and epoxy version of this figure here. And once that the mold is done, then we take the gray epoxy and foam version out, and then I cast with the resin into the mold. That's how we make the arms. That's how we make the whole thing, actually. It seemed to me that um, everything that I had been interested in from the beginning, even if it was a if it was object based or, uh, or performance based, pointed in some way to to the body and to a gesture or action in the body. For me, you know, using my own form uh, has never been about self-portraiture. Um, it's an anti-self-portraiture. It's a negation of everything that self-portraiture is about. Uh, I found my way into using some of these uh, these tools and technologies um, that are used uh, in today's global marketplace um, for a lot of purposes um, as a way of basically <clears throat> creating this um, surrogate of myself. Eventually I was able to compile um, the super accurate uh, three-dimensional version of myself. And it's basically like a, uh, a large photo, 3D photograph. Uh, they're not all distorted only on one axis. They've been uh, also distorted uh, on the y-axis and they've been elongated ever so slightly by 15%. Uh, this particular group has. Um, and uh, then they've been scaled up, of course, uh, to uh, 80 inches tall, uh, which further removes them from that uh, original human space. Um, and, then the, and then the more radical distortions, all on these horizontal axes. In the case of this one, it's an axis, diagonal axis, that's located somewhere in between Y, uh, excuse me, X and Z. Um, and it's been distorted by 200%. So it's two times as wide, stretched diagonally. Um, whereas this one is two times as wide, stretched exclusively on that z-axis, stretched out that way. So everything's twice as wide. You can see, I don't know if this is an interesting thing, but you can see essentially the hand is twice as, twice as big. Everything is basically twice as big on that one axis. This has just been, you know, I've gone through and marked little areas in pencil, uh, bubbles, uh, areas that haven't been sanded out properly, and uh, we're just fine-tuning them, basically, so over a period of time, really getting them uh, to as close to perfect as we can, basically. <laughs> the light is a little unbalanced in here, so... Um, it's hard to see all the spots perfectly, but we are living at a time when we are forced to um, confront the world in visual terms more and more. So everything is presented to us in visual terms. And yet at the same time, increasingly, we cannot trust what we're seeing. So this creates whether you want to call it a cognitive dissonance or some kind of a disconnect between that which sort of empirically we're experiencing and that which we know to be true <laughs> in, our, uh, in our human souls. So um, that's confusing and disconcerting and I think explains a lot about attention deficit disorder and all kinds of psychological problems that human beings are increasingly faced with um, in this environment. I mean, I think that it's an evolutionary shift that we're going through as our brains are changing and adapting to our information age. The, the works on paper that I've been, uh, uh, the activity of drawing, um, which includes for me, it's very broad, it includes um, collage, pencil, ink, uh, as well as using the inkjet printer. I use the inkjet printer quite a bit. Um, this is an inkjet print of one of the models. It's been distorted. You can see it's wider. 
Um, and it's a particular rendering which shows you the geometry of the model. So you get a sense with these of the complexity of the geometry. There are over two million polygons in the model of the body. And uh, each little triangle represents um, uh, one polygon. And uh, so you get a sense of just the, the, the amount of information that was cap captured by that scan. The, the, the use of uh, numbers is extremely important in the work in general. Um, the prime numbers uh, are always extremely fascinating to me. The notion of something repeating infinitely um, but being unsolvable. Um, there's sort of a numerical exhaustion, if you will, that I tend to think these are evocative of. It's like how many ways can the body be distorted? How many permutations? How far can you distort it? <clears throat> um, and the answer is that it's, with this, it's infinite. There's an infinite variety. So it's that, 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 uh, that sc the scale of that idea of something that can be infinitely recreated and recomposed, um, I think gets at this kind of idea of confronting this large monolithic um, situation in terms of uh, the you know the information age and and just the structure of uh, of uh, our world today.